At the end of the day, what the boot campaign and really um, Morgan Luttrell has put together is probably the best doctors, um, the best neurologists, the best head guys, the best uh, physical trainers, um, you know, masseuse, chiropractor, you name it. Everything that could possibly be wrong. They get the best crew together, surrounded by the most passionate individuals coming through the program that don't take no for an answer. It's a no fail program for a reason. No matter what you're doing, you're going to succeed at a level higher than you ever thought possible. And they take the, the roof off of you know, where you think your expectations and your possibilities are. Travis Pastrana from Annapolis, Maryland, ringleader of Nitro Circus. I'm at the Cooper Clinic in Dallas, Texas. here uh, by invite from the boot campaign. Um, really the main focus for me is to learn more about concussions and head injuries and try to take Jim DeChamp and uh, James Foster along with me as two of the guys that have hit their heads as much or more than, than I've hit, hit my head. Hi, I'm Jim DeChamp. We're at Cooper Clinic. We're here to do some research on our past injuries and figure out if we can improve this. <laughs> We don't talk about head injuries much because it's just a part, <laughs> sadly, it's just a part of what we do. It always has been. We're gonna go through some medical head examination testing and we're the first three people to go through this program that are non-military and I'm very excited and curious. Boot Campaign is a national nonprofit for veterans, military, and their families. It's different from any other programs because of the holistic approach that we take. There's not a one-stop shop that's taking care of mind, body, soul like we are right now. Matters of the brain are sort of covered in this veil of stigma and that people don't want to address brain health at all. Everyone's afraid to, to talk about it. Everyone's afraid to, to go into it. And you have a head injury and you're like, I'm tired, and I'm lethargic, and I'm angry, or I'm sad, or I got these emotions I never had, and no one wants to admit, as a guy, like, I have a concussion, I start bawling, crying for no reason. You know, I'm not gonna go admit that I'm crying, I just, you know, oh, that's a lie, you know, and then, you know, your head heals up, or most of the time with me it does, and you get back normal, and you realize that it's just concussion related, but, um, you know, for some people, that never heals. Dave Mira uh, really opened up a lot of people's eyes, someone that was, very passionate um, about life, had two daughters that he adored and a wife that he loved. And you say, is it possible for someone like Dave to commit suicide? Is it possible when you see the football players that are at the top of their, their game and go downhill that fast? And it scares me. It scares my family, it scares especially my mom and uh, my wife. <laughs> um, you know, and having kids and wanting to be there for them long term, uh, it's something that, that I worry about. I worry every time I see someone get a concussion on Nitro. I have a lot of friends who are not all there anymore, and you can tell, but like, what do you do? There's nothing to say or do. The only thing that we can do is what we're doing now, which is coming here and trying to learn about it and trying to understand it better so we can help other people. It's a gnarly thing. There's a lot more to it than any of us know, and it's a new thing that we're learning about, and. Hopefully, um, hopefully we can learn some more about it um, this week. When I was doing the NASCAR test, and I said, how many concussions have you had? I said, you know, I don't know, but you know, on average, probably two or three major ones a year since I was, you know, nine years old. And they laughed. They're like, no, 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 were they medically diagnosed? I'm like, I, I have at least 30 that were on video where I was out for minutes. I've had a good KO at least once a year for 15 years. My big one was uh, the car crash, and that's where I tried to barrel roll a car, landed upside down. I woke up a couple days later in the hospital. I was warned if I hit my head again, I could be a vegetable, and I'm like, I don't want to do that. So I kind of added up my whole career. I'm like, I really, my bucket list of stunts is empty. I've done everything I wanted to do, and then if you keep on pushing over time, eventually something bad, really bad is going to happen. So I had to kind of cash my chips in and call it good. I've had some things with my immediate family, my wife, 
my in-laws and stuff where I have gone way overboard getting angry. I'm not sure it's head injury related or just life change and I gotta, gotta deal with it. As far as I can tell, I just have continued to live and grow and evolve as a human, <laughs> as a person. Looking back at myself, I definitely could say that my personality has changed a bit. You know, I, I, get, I get real much more irritable and frustrated and, and, and it's harder for me to let go of things that normally I'd just be able to let, you know, like whatever. You get weird emotions of anger. For me, it was mostly um, just short-tempered, something that I would never really am. I'm kind of like laugh about everything and my body, fortunately, has been able to clear up and I feel solid. But, you know, I don't know how long that'll last. I don't know if it has a downside, and I'd like to find out not only for myself, but for my wife and for my kids' sake and to, to be the best husband and, and father that I can be in the future. When the guys called and Morgan Luttrell from the boot campaign said, hey, we've got a, a program that, you know, you got to open up and you got to tell them everything and you got to be honest and you got to, we're going to do blood work and we're going to know everything about your life and we're going to know stuff that you didn't know about your brain and how it's working or not working, and we're gonna try to improve you guys, and we're gonna try to let you guys live long, healthy lives. With this program, I think they're doing their best to care the technology we have these days to really find out the extent of those type of injuries. I think it's, it's, a, it's a different, interesting, strange thing that we're doing, but I think that only good can come of it, and if nothing comes from it, that's, that's really not that bad of a result. You know, if, if there's any possibility of, of, of good things happening from this, then we would be stupid not to do it. A couple days ago, we arrived at Cooper Clinic in Dallas, Texas. The first thing you notice when you get to this place is there's people running, jogging, tennis courts. The whole place is designed on getting your body in better shape. We started out here at the Cooper Clinic and they just got a, a general assessment of kind of your blood work, um, you know, where you are, how you can be healthier, or any other factors that could affect um, mood, um, anger, anything that, that could be an underlining factor on what may be misinterpreted for a head injury. Hey, hey Jim, can I get a hand? I can't hold the cup and pee at the same time. <laughs> so the first day here, we, um, we did a treadmill stress test where the treadmill stays at a consistent speed but increases an incline over time and it becomes really, really, really difficult. And they have different categories for, you know, poor health, good, excellent, and then superior. And uh, it was really hard. I'm not in the best shape of my life right now. I actually uh, just had surgery on this, so I was a little sore trying to push myself there. I was really disappointed I didn't uh, get as far as Foster. So everything's been a competition between Jim, Foster, and I. Back hurts. Knee is about to give out. That's enough. <laughs> we did a CT scan. Uh, you know, they look through they look through your whole body, top to bottom. It's the first time I've been in an MRI and actually doing activities in it and they're scanning my brain while I'm thinking about different things. I know some machinery that I'm stuck in is very, very, very expensive things that not only only stick you in there, if you're really broken. I went in to get an EEG. They put a skull cap on and there's, all, there's 24 little electromagnetic receptors all over it and each one of these electromagnetic receptors, they have to fill with gel, so you get a clear connection to your scalp, and they hook it up to a machine. I felt like I was in the Matrix. They put on a screen where there's fast flowing pictures, and it's coming at you really fast, and you gotta keep your, keep your toes for a long, long time, and eventually start really having to focus harder, 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 and they're really testing your attention span and your quickness to recognize things. So the benefits of an EEG for people like us, you can see whether or not your brain is using the parts it would normally use to accomplish these tasks. 
My first two days here, uh, Dr. Hart was far and away the most interesting, insightful, and in my opinion, the person I learned the most from. My name is John Hart. I'm a cognitive neurologist who takes care of patients with problems with behavior and cognition. And I'm a cognitive neuroscientist researcher who studies memory and memory retrieval and how that process can be disrupted and how you can try to treat it. At the end of the day, he's like, look, if you hit your head and you're not 100% recovered and you hit your head again, there is 100% chance of brain damage. But what we do know is what's called second hit phenomena. So if a brain is hit and it's got some sort of problems, inflammation or whatever sort of issues from a head injury, if you hit it again before it's fully recovered, the deficit's bigger, it can last longer, and you may have a chance of doing more long-lasting sort of permanent kind of effects. I look at Harry Bink at, at World Games. He wasn't 100%, but he looks you in the eye and he goes, I can do this. And then he gets done and says, I don't remember falling. And yeah, he won the World Games. He won the World Championships. He did something that's never been done on a motorcycle because he's practiced, because he's done all that. It's so hard to say, how do you pull someone that you know can do it from such a huge life-changing event? There has to be things in place that allow these guys to not have to make the decisions because every athlete is going to want to go out there looking at the downside, looking at this, looking at how we can help as Nitro Circus, not just help them reach their goals, but help them to be able to live a full life. I mean, Jim was in a coma for a while. Jim's not the same Jim that, that I knew growing up. He's an awesome person, uh, my uncle. Uh, got knocked out as an NFL player. And he went from really aggressive and really, um, you know, that guy never cried, now he, he's really emotional. He's, he's changed his whole personality. He's not a bad person, he might be a better person, but he's different. Practicality, I'm here to learn what we can do to help myself, my friends, not have that emotion, not have, I cry randomly. It's embarrassing to say, I'm like, I never really say that outside of you know, being here, but it's like, this is stuff that never happened to me before. Typically, most people respond really well and recover pretty naturally after concussion. If you don't, there's like five things you can get. You can get migraine and headaches. You can get a cognitive or thinking problem, typically memory, but it doesn't have to be. You can get a behavioral mood problem. You can get depression, anxiety, panic disorder, PTSD, anything you can get like on your own, you can get secondary to concussion. You can get tinnitus with ringing in your ears and you can get a balance problem. And that same type of post-concussion syndrome that we see from guys who have been in sports-related issues right after it doesn't go away, um, you could see in the military guys with the same sort of problems afterwards. I'm a big believer with genetics and environment. Nothing straight all genes typically, nothing straight all environment. It's a real interaction of things. Um, so there are some people who have certain genetic profiles that we know clearly are an advantage. And let's face it, when you get to the level that these guys are at in Nitro, is you've self-selected out a lot of dudes who are not gonna make it. Head trauma hasn't been hard to talk about. Uh, Typically, yeah, it's a, it's a difficult thing to get people to talk about and to get people to really level with you about and just be honest about because not a lot of people know much about it, you know? Like, we don't. We have our thoughts and ideas, but it's all just questions, really. It's, it's a taboo, touchy subject that scares people, and for good reason. But being here, knowing that the, that's the whole reason we're here is we're, we're analyzing all of our health, mental, physical, and trying to give us the tools to make sure your brain health is as good as it possibly can be. In the next few days, I guess we're getting finalized, we're getting told what the big picture about us is, I guess that's going on, so I hope they tell us. I hope they don't find anything bad. <laughs> like, I guess they have all my brain scans right now, they're gonna be like, uh, yeah, your hamster doesn't make it around the wheel anymore. Selfishly, this is a phenomenal opportunity for, for Nitro Circus, action sports, and, and just human beings in general. You know, to be the first non-military to come through this with uh, James Foster, Jim DeChamp, myself, 
this is a huge honor, and I can't wait for you know the next couple of days to see when all of this comes together. So we just wrapped up four days with the boot campaign here in Dallas, and uh, it was awesome. Uh, learned a lot. I'm leaving this place with a really good feeling and, and a lot of info that I'm going to use in the future. In the last two days, we did the MRI, the EEG, and some paper tests, and that all went smoothly for me. I got scored well on everything, and it turns out there's nothing really wrong with my brain. Ultimately, I came out of this just, there's nothing really wrong with me. I don't have cancer. I did, they did all the scans on everything. Mostly it comes down to, if you want your brain to perform better, you have to exercise and eat well. I think essentially what we know about traumatic brain injuries and concussions and long-term effects of them, whether your brain is damaged or not, it can cause personality changes. Hitting your head hard <laughs> multiple times over the year, you know, if you have 15, 20 concussions over 20 years, that also is going to affect different parts of your brain, it, even, even if it's not detectable under an MRI, it changes your brain composition, chemistry. The good thing is, is there's multiple ways to deal with these. And a lot of them can be dealt with, with taking care of your body, getting exercise every day, blood flowing to your brain, endorphins, adrenaline, getting these things going in your body and switching on, all make your thinking clearer and make your head work better. What we found out was basically that working out, that being active, um, actually really helps regenerate the brain. I didn't think the brain um, you know, could heal. And we found out that the next step uh, to really healing and getting everything as good as we can for the future was Virginia High Performance. They work on just making sure that you can do the physical activity that you need to keep brain health, to keep body function for the rest of your life. And with Smashville just getting hurt, this was the perfect time to go. My name is Phil Smadji and I'm here at Virginia High Performance to make my body work again. So about just under three months ago, I attempted the world record razor jump and I broke the record, but at the same time, my neck. So uh, yeah, lost control of my body, so we're here and just pretty much rebuilding kind of from square one, from the ground up. Three months ago, the doctors didn't know if Phil would ever walk again. They told him he'd definitely never be able to write with his right hand, he'd probably use all function of his right hand. Um, and definitely never ride a motorcycle again. And then he wheels into VHP a month ago. They said, get up. I was like, are you sure? Like, yes. And he's out of the chair and they said, you're not touching that again. And just after having checked all the, the x-rays, they're like, it's time to work and we're gonna get you back to where you wanna be. Alex Oliver, uh, owner of Virginia High Performance. Back in uh, June of 2016, we got a phone call from Boot Campaign. Um, they heard about some of the stuff that we were doing with um, youth athletics and with my veteran background. Um, they had asked us if we'd be interested in being a part of their health and wellness pipeline and seeing if we could put something together to help uh, the recovery of uh, veterans. For my injury, it was a C5 level incomplete quadriplegic. So that means at first I had no use of my limbs at all and many doctors were telling me that it would either stay that way or at best I could get my legs back. My arms they weren't so optimistic about because of the way my spine was pinched and so the one doctor told me a year and a half to get my hands moving again even and here we are not even three months in and thumbs up. And uh, So my name's Tim Kelly, I work at Virginia High Performance as one of the strength coaches and I get to work with uh, plenty of amazing human beings that uh, do amazing things and every day I get to learn something new and I get to teach them something new. Uh, so Phil had a, um, a C5 uh, incomplete injury and so technically many doctors will say oh you should, should never walk again or you should never uh, do anything of any kind of exertion or uh, physical activity or anything, right? People tend to think that anything spinal or especially uh, the cervical spine is like all of a sudden this like no, no, like oh my god my life is over, I can't do anything anymore, I'm fragile, I'm an egg. No disrespect to any doctors, but you know, there is no textbook or no roadmap for the improvement he can make because uh, Western medicine is only so far along. And don't get me wrong, I use all the science and research 
um, to you know, base my training principles off of, but I want to I want to see where that roadmap can go. Right, we're adventurers. We're the Lewis and Clark of uh, you know that kind of injury. The program here at VHP is six days a week, all day, 100% effort. Like literally, when we leave here, that's it for the day. Everybody's like, "Hey, did you go see the beach?" We're like, "Nope." We went to bed. <laughs> I just put full faith in the program and I trusted my trainers, I trusted Tim. I know he knows his stuff, so I literally just put myself in his hands and if he said I could do it, I pushed as hard as I possibly could to do it. And so really the biggest difference is having the mindset. Movement's life and the more we got him moving, it was the more he wanted. You know, when he started seeing how, how capable he was becoming again, that's his motivation. And, uh, you know, Phil just brought it every single day. It, it, it's kind of crazy, I think. I see it every day, but what, what the coaches are able to do, just thinking out of the box and pushing people, but tapping into their full potential through these injuries, it, uh, it just amazes me every day. My boy Phil is just a total inspiration. Look at this guy. Came here, couldn't walk, and now, Balancing on the board, killing it. At the end of the day, what the boot campaign and really um, Morgan Luttrell has put together is probably the best doctors, um, the best neurologists, the best head guys, the best uh, physical trainers, um, you know, masseuse, chiropractor, you name it. Everything that could possibly be wrong. They get the best crew together, surrounded by the most passionate individuals coming through the program that don't take no for an answer. It's a no fail program for a reason. No matter what you're doing, you're going to succeed at a level higher than you ever thought possible. And they take the, the roof off of you know, where you think your expectations and your possibilities are. I think it'd be almost impossible to summarize everything we've learned. I mean, from concussion protocols that we can implement into Nitro Circus and Action Sports, um, to kind of how to evaluate uh, people that are injured, just kind of getting the knowledge on this is from bad nutrition, this is uh, from head injury. This is just OCD, uh, still helpful, but you know, we can do different things there. So the biggest thing that I learned was how nutrition can help my sleep, can help my body heal, and at the end of the day, how to properly train um, to make, not perfect, I'm never gonna be what I was before all the injuries, but um, I left here walking a lot better than I ever thought I could. I left here in a lot less pain than I've been for a lot of years, and that's one month. So. The hard part is going to be going home, um, working on that same nutrition, trying to implement everything I've learned over the past month, you know, into my day-to-day -day activity, and that's tough on the road. But now knowing that, we can implement that into some of the regimen that we put into Nitro Circus, and hopefully help, you know, the younger guys come through and have less chance of, you know, of being hurt long term. And if they are, then have a better chance of helping them get to their feet and getting to do something they love to do. Morgan, Shelly, everyone at Boot Campaign, everyone at the Cooper Clinic, um, everyone here at BHP, you guys, you've changed my life. You've given Phil a lot of hope that he would have never gotten. And looking around, you've done a lot of good for a lot of people. Thank you, and thanks for letting us be a part of it.